So for many days we've been uh, discussing the meaning of uh, Surah Al-Alaq. And just to summarize very quickly, Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that this new revelation that is coming to you, it is something that is new, that is not known to you. And it is from the one who created you and created everything. So it is of great importance because it is it is directly from the Creator. It is not man-made. bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. And who is he? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes himself. Khalaq al-insan. He made the human being. So obviously if he's teaching the human being something, he is the one who made the human being so he knows what the human being needs to know or what he knows, what he doesn't know, what he needs to know. Khalaq al-insan. Min alaq. He created man insignificant, something that was hanging on the placenta, a fetus, on in the womb of the mother. It is something, he wasn't even created, he wasn't even formed. The man is insignificant. Now, recite again. And your Lord is generous. Your Lord is perfect. So perfect and so amazing and full of mercy that... He taught mankind worldly knowledge. What you find in books, worldly knowledge. Uh, the, the one who taught man with the pen, he's so generous. He taught man with the pen and he also taught man from revelation. And he taught the humankind what they didn't know. What they didn't know of the worldly knowledge and what they didn't know of the Unseen knowledge. الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم. Then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, كلا. كلا has a lot of depth in it. It it's used to negate what's before it, as if whatever is saying now someone is negating it, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala Himself is negating it and telling about telling us about the state of the man of mankind. كلا إن الإنسان لا يطوى. The, the humankind, though, has no care about this revelation, right? He transgresses beyond bounds. He's allowed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah allowed us to transgress beyond bounds, beyond our limits, beyond what is permissible. But the man actually takes that step and goes beyond bounds. إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَيَطْغَى How does he go beyond bounds? أَرَّآهُ اسْتَغْنَى He thinks he's all that. He thinks he doesn't need revelation. He thinks he doesn't need the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He thinks he and his mind himself is sufficient to educate him, is sufficient for him. The state of the humankind right now, the atheists that we have and the pseudo-intellectuals that, that you see, they think their mind can educate them about all kinds of morality, all kinds of spiritual guidance that they need, they can come up with it with their mind and the Plato's and the philosophers of the old, they can read their books and then ascertain information and learn from them. And they think they don't need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says? Iqra, you are getting a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, he taught you how to write books so others, you can teach others, others can learn from it. But now the mankind thinks that he doesn't need any guidance. So much more can be said. I'm going to move on quickly. He thinks he is self-sufficient. He thinks that if he comes up his own laws of morality and justice, the laws of morality that humankind comes up with can apply to all mankinds of all places of all time. Absolutely not. The Holocaust, what's happening to the Palestinians in Gaza, Millions and millions of people are killed and all, all of the nations before. Where is their justice? Where is their justice? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna ila rabbika ruj'a. Your ultimate return is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The whole concept of justice is impossible to attain until you believe in the day of judgment. And how will you know about the day of judgment? Through revelation. How will you know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? through revelation. Human mind cannot come up with it. It is the ultimate justice 
of everything is going to be achieved. That's just one aspect I'm highlighting. Will be achieved through your belief that there will be a hereafter where the wrongs will be righted. And that is on the day of judgment that we only learn through revelation and we're almost done. These other ayat are, are coming about Abu Jahl. Do you see this person who is forbidding? Forbidding what? Abadan ida salla. The, the slave when he is actually praying. So from a hadith we learn, this is part of this small Sira story, where Abu Jahl said to, to the people around him, if I see Muhammad praying again, I'm going to trample on his neck. And the narration say, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was praying, Abu Jahl rushed to step on his neck, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he couldn't. You know why? Because the narration say either he saw a huge ditch of fire between himself and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He got scared and he ran away. Other narrations say, Abu Jahl, he felt blinded. So, so when he rushed back, people saying, what happened? Why didn't you trample his neck? It's like, this is what happened to me. I saw this ditch of fire uh, in front of me and I couldn't go. So he, he ran away. So this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commenting that, do you see this person who is actually forbidding the slave of Allah to pray? in kana ala al-huda. Does he not think that this man that is praying might actually be guided? Or might, what he might be commanding is to have fear in Allah, to have belief. And he has this revelation from Allah because Abu Jahl is taghna, right? He thinks he knows all that. He doesn't need any revelation. He doesn't need any guidance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, is he humble enough to even think that this person might have something good to say, might have some guidance. Oh, amara bi taqwa, ara'ayta in kathaba wa tawalla. And then, do you not see him, Abu Jahl, deny whatever this person has to offer from the revelation of Allah? And he denies and he turns away. Alam ya'lam bi anna Allah yara? Does he not know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching him? Again, all of these ayat, these very, very early Makki ayat are reminding us that we ourselves will never know about the ilmul ghayb. We will never be able to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We would, could never imagine what heaven and hell is like, what the day of judgment is to entail, what is the purpose of it, what is the meaning of life, what is justice, what is injustice, what is the right thing, what is the golden standard you need to apply throughout time, throughout time, since the ancient times, to forever until the day of judgment what is that law what is that law can hum human beings come up with absolutely not i'm sorry i kept you long but yeah and then there's the last passage inshallah we will cover next time.